These are the cheapest phones you can buy from Google and Apple. This is the Pixel 8a and this is the iPhone SE3. So I thought, why not compare these phones to find out which company has the better budget phone? Even though it's kind of hard to call these budget phones because this, the iPhone SE3 costs 430 US dollars and this Pixel 8a costs $500 at the time of recording this video. So definitely not cheap, but they're also not quite as expensive as flagship phones. But in this video, we're gonna compare these phones in six different categories, which I think are the things most people care the most about when buying phones. One of them I already talked about, it was the price. And this phone obviously won because it's cheaper, although not by a whole lot. But let's look at the second one, and that is build quality. So both of these phones have aluminum frames and both have Gorilla Glass on the front. However, the SE3 is the only one that has Gorilla Glass on the back. The Pixel 8a has plastic on the back. In terms of durability, the Pixel is better because obviously plastic doesn't crack like glass. Glass is glass and glass breaks. And when it comes to repairability, iPhones are notorious for that. So definitely in that aspect, the Pixel is better. Both are also IP67 water resistant, but Overall, I'd say the iPhone definitely feels more premium. And I think that has to do with the glass on the back, but at the same time, the Pixel is better in some ways. So I'd say it's a draw for this category. But now if you look at the screens, the Pixel definitely has a noticeably bigger screen. It's a 6.1 inch display, while the iPhone has a 4.7 inch screen. So there's a huge difference here. And for those of you who like the bigger screen, the Pixel is definitely a way better option. It's also way brighter. The screen goes all the way up to 1400 nits, while on the SE, the screen goes up to 625 nits. This also has 120 hertz, while the iPhone is just good old 60 hertz. So the Pixel is definitely a clear winner. The content consumption experience is better on the Pixel because it has an OLED screen, so you get those deep and rich blacks. But then the iPhone SE 3 seems to have better speakers. And that's something that surprised me because this phone is significantly thinner than the than the Pixel. So I wasn't expecting that, but Apple just seems to have figured out speakers. They make their iPad sound so good as well. And then both phones also have fingerprint sensors, but on the SE3, it's way better because it's the good old actual fingerprint sensor, not the one, the in-display one, the Pixel 8 has. The Pixel 8 also has face detection. It just uses the camera, but honestly, I wouldn't use it. But overall, if you're talking about the screens, the Pixel easily wins this one. But hey, what about performance? Because the iPhone SE3 has the A15 Bionic processor inside, which is the same processor the iPhone 13 series had, even the 13 Pro. And the Pixel 8a has the Tensor G3 chip inside, which is the same one the latest and greatest Pixel 8 Pro has right now. Well, I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro as my daily driver for some time now, so I know exactly what the A15 Bionic processor is like. But just to get an idea about about the Tensor G3 chip. I decided to run benchmark tests and the iPhone performed way better. This isn't something I was expecting because this phone has a processor that isn't the latest and greatest, while this phone has the latest and greatest processor from Google. But while I was using these phones, I didn't actually notice a huge difference. If I didn't run that benchmark test, I probably would have said that both of these are very similar because I didn't actually notice a difference or at least not a huge difference. I definitely noticed quite a few bugs on the Pixel, but I think that has to do more with Android and not the phone itself. So overall, my experience was more or less the same. And I think it's because most of the times the things we do on our phones don't actually push the processors to their limits. So you don't actually see that difference. But when you do in things like gaming and video editing on your phone or exporting videos or something, which I didn't end up doing because that's not what I typically do on my phone, but you would definitely notice a difference. So I've got to give this one to the iPhone. It's definitely better. It's more powerful. However, it is important to consider that the Pixel has double the amount of RAM. This has eight gigs of RAM and this has four gigs of RAM. And this also has double the amount of storage. 128 gigs over here and 64 gigs over here. Now, just before we talk about arguably one of the most important thing on phones, let me quickly tell you about Squarespace. So in this day and age, having a good online presence is the key to getting your next client or that dream job you've been looking at. And Squarespace makes it incredibly easy for you to do that. For example, they have pre-built templates to get started in literally minutes, and then you can drag and drop things and images and whatnot and type a few lines of text and you'll be done in a couple of hours. I've done this myself. so. 
I know what I'm talking about. And then once you have a website, you can immediately start running email marketing campaigns. You can build a complete online store within Squarespace and sell digital or physical products and use their built-in SEO tools to reach your target audience. And you can also access all kinds of analytics about your site. You can even buy a custom domain from Squarespace. There's a reason why they call it the all-in-one platform. But hey, don't take my word for it. Visit squarespace.com slash spixel and start your 14-day free trial. If you like it, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. The link's below. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about battery life. So the iPhone SE 3 has a 2018 milliamp hour battery inside and the Pixel 8a has a 4,492 milliamp hour battery inside. Now that is a huge difference. So without even doing any kind of testing, you would just expect the Pixel to last longer. Longer. When I tested these phones, I used them just like I would use any other phone. And I ended up getting around five hours of screen time on the SE3 with 10% battery remaining. While on the Pixel 8a, I didn't get the same amount of screen on time. I ended up using it a little bit less, around four hours, but it still had 50% battery remaining. I like to think that five hours is the minimum amount of battery life any phone should have so that it lasts you at least one whole day on a single charge. And while the SE3 got really close to that number, it's still really hard to recommend this phone because it's just barely meeting that mark. Even though this phone will probably get you through your day on a single charge, you shouldn't be relying on it without a battery bank. And for that reason, the Pixel 8a is a clear winner. Speaking of the battery bank, charging on both phones is about the same. The Pixel 8a can charge as fast as 18 watts, while the iPhone can charge as fast as 20 watts. And I was expecting the Pixel to be faster, but turns out it's the iPhone. Now, when it comes to the cameras, the iPhone SE 3 has one single 12 megapixel camera on the back and a seven megapixel selfie camera. The Pixel, on the other hand, not only has more cameras, but they're also higher in megapixels. So it has a normal wide angle lens, just like the iPhone, but it's 64 megapixels. And it also has an ultra wide angle camera on the back that's 13 megapixels. And the selfie camera is also 13 megapixels. Now, based on these numbers, it's pretty clear that the Pixel is the better one. The iPhone doesn't even come close. And that's exactly what I thought too. I thought the Pixel was going to absolutely destroy the iPhone in this category. However, when I transferred the photos to my computer, I was uh, honestly a bit surprised because I realized that this comparison was going to be a lot closer than I would have ever imagined. For example, in this photo, you can see the pixel looks a lot better, at least in my opinion. I think the colors look a lot more natural. This is actually how the scene looked like in real life. On the iPhone, I think the colors are a little too green. Same thing with this photo. I think the colors look more natural on the pixel. And this is actually a photo taken at 2x zoom. And you can see that the pixel is actually more sharp than the iPhone. Although, to be honest, I think the difference is not as noticeable as I was expecting it to be. Now, this is actually a very difficult photo for phones to capture for some reason. I've reviewed many phones over the years and this red color in particular seems to be something they all struggle with a lot. But you can see the Pixel actually did a fantastic job. This is honestly impressive in my opinion. Even in this photo, you can see the details in the flower are so much more clear on the Pixel compared to the iPhone. So the Pixel seems to be better when it comes to outdoor photos and neutral colors. Like all of these photos mostly have neutral colors and you can see the photos on the Pixel look more natural. However, indoors, the iPhone starts to look better, especially when you have warmer colors like reds, oranges, yellows, and skin tones. Like for example, in this photo, while the Pixel is still a more accurate representation of real life, I think in this case, the iPhone looks better. And this seems to be the case with the iPhone, but the Pixel seems to be better in low light situations like you can see in these photos. And then obviously the Pixel can also take ultra wide shots, which is something you simply cannot do on the iPhone. But you know what? I think the iPhone is more reliable than the Pixel because for example, in this photo, the Pixel completely missed focus. You can see this just looks blurry as soon as you compare it to the iPhone. Because of that, I think I'm gonna have to call this a draw. So does this mean these phones are equally good because the scores are level? Well, not really, because if I was actually recommending one of these phones to someone, I would still probably tell them to go with the Pixel because of the battery life. I think battery life should be weighted a little bit more heavily. Maybe we should have given it two points. For me, it's kind of hard to recommend a phone that may not last you a whole day. 